This is CNN Breaking News. And we have breaking news into CNN. There has been an incident at a nightclub in Istanbul. Um, here are the pictures that we are looking at now. This is from our affiliate at CNN, Turk, which is showing us uh, what is taking place there. These are emergency responders who were outside of the club. And now we have seen people being carried out of the club and uh, people beginning to gather and uh, try to figure out just what kind of damage has been done. We see some of those workers uh, waving off people away to get them away from the scene. Um, clearly, this is a situation that um, they are still trying to sort out now. Um, we are going to be following this very closely. As soon as we get more information, we're going to bring this to you as we can. Again, an incident at a nightclub in Istanbul, uh, Istanbul, Turkey, and um, emergency workers, as you see, uh, escorting people away from that nightclub. We're going to bring you more as soon as we learn more details. Well, earlier I spoke to our Turkey correspondent, Mark Lowen, who gave us the latest. We're hearing that at least 35 people have been killed and 40 people have been injured. Some of them are in a critical condition. The attack, uh, um, the attack uh, targeted the Rainer nightclub here in Istanbul. It's close to the Bosphorus Bridge, which you might be able to pick out behind me. Um, it is one of the most popular nightclubs in Istanbul, indeed in Turkey. Um, and it happened shortly after midnight uh, when at least one attacker uh, entered the nightclub. Uh, he uh, sprayed bullets outside the nightclub before entering. Uh, there are reports that at least one was dressed in a Santa Claus outfit. Um, and then enter the nightclub, sp the nightclub spraying uh, bullets from a Kalashnikov rifle inside, um, uh, killing uh, civilians, and we understand at least one uh, police officer. Uh, we are told that at least five or 600 people were inside the nightclub when the attacker struck. They were, of course, celebrating New Year's Eve, uh, bidding farewell to a very traumatic year in Turkey's uh, modern history. Uh, and uh, there are reports also that some of those uh, people inside the nightclub jumped into the boss for us. Uh, the, the sea on which the nightclub was, was, uh, was, was uh, situated in order to try to evade the attack. And Mark, uh, some 17,000 extra police officers on duty on New Year's Eve across Turkey just in order to try and contain such a, an awful eventuality. Yeah, I mean, uh, public gatherings had already been cancelled in on Taksim Square, in other areas of the city. Uh, Istanbul has been on high alert. Uh, of course, this has been a year that has seen a, a wave of deadly terror attacks, uh, both by so-called Islamic State, but also by the Kurdish militant group, the PKK. At least 22 terror attacks this, this year have killed 360 people. Uh, and so it has been a very, very distressing year for Turkey, a very grim year year um, that uh, this nation was hoping to uh, put behind them uh, and therefore people were celebrating tonight, uh, albeit in an atmosphere of heightened security with, um, with people prevented from going into the centre of the city, uh, with uh, areas of Istanbul cordoned off, areas of Ankara as well, uh, but uh, this appears to have been a targeted attack on a very popular nightclub that will send shockwaves through the country and will, will show just how vulnerable Turkey remains after a very uh, grim year of terror attacks. Uh, one of the national television stations saying that special police force officers are currently still searching the nightclub. You mentioned the PKK, you mentioned Islamic State. Of course, the answer is we still don't know. Yet the governor of uh, Istanbul coming out with a very strong statement that he said, without doubt, this was terrorism. Yeah, I mean, clearly this was a terror attack, um, uh, and this country sadly is, is, it has become accustomed to the, such attacks that have targeted public areas, that have targeted police, that have targeted security forces. Uh, what has tended to happen, Gavin, is that um, the PKK, the Kurdish militant group, has targeted the security forces, police, uh, and army and the like. Uh, you'll remember a few weeks ago there was a twin bombing here in Istanbul outside the Besiktas football stadium that targeted police. That was claimed by a Kurdish militant group. Um, but then there have been attacks on more public areas like Istanbul Airport uh, back in June that killed 48 people. That was claimed by so-called Islamic State. The fact that this hit a 
a, a nightclub with um, uh, revelers, with, with, with civilians uh, among the casualties, that would point, I suppose, towards uh, the Islamic State group. But at this stage, I suppose it's too early to tell exactly who was behind this attack. Uh, we know that um, uh, IS has released a video saying that Turkey is very much um, targeted by the group, that they are trying to wreak havoc in Turkey. Turkey's become ever more embroiled in the war in Syria. It's launched a ground operation in Syria earlier this year to try to target IS. Uh, so uh, I think the finger of suspicion will probably point towards IS. But as I say, Kurdish militancy is very much a play here, as is a homegrown left-wing group as well um, that is classified by Turkey as a terrorist group. So this is a, a vulnerable country, and that is the sad state of affairs that Turkey uh, bids farewell to 2016 and begins 2017 in, in yet another uh, terror attack in, 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 in the heart of Turkey's most, uh, most uh, popular and, 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 and biggest city. Mark Lowen there. Aykan Erdemir is a former Turkish member of parliament. He's now a senior fellow with the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, a policy institute based in Washington. And we asked him whether the attackers were likely to be targeting the nightclub or the celebration of New Year's Eve. This was not only targeting of uh, one of Istanbul's top nightclubs, but also a, a symbolic target, that is uh, targeting a secular lifestyle, targeting... Uh, Western lifestyle, and it's in, in fact quite similar uh, to the Paris attack uh, in the sense that uh, the Islamic State, uh, if it's confirmed that they were behind the attack, uh, is uh, yet again uh, trying to undermine uh, Turkey's secular Western uh, lifestyle. So uh, from that point of view, this is not only a, a, a matter of uh, you know, hard security, but it is at the same time an ideological battle. The battle. It's, it is as if a, a, a clashing of different worldviews, and therefore it's not only uh, limited to the Islamic State, because in the run-up to this attack uh, for the last two weeks, Turkey has had quite an intense debate about Christmas celebrations, about New Year's celebrations, and uh, other Islamists, you know, maybe not as violent or as radical as the Islamic State, uh, have also been involved uh, in pointing the finger uh, to the seculars in Turkey, to the kind of more Western-oriented citizens in Turkey, and by targeting them and threatening them not to celebrate New Year's, conflating New Year's with Christmas, and arguing that this is illegitimate, this is... Uh, basically a, a kind of a Christian propaganda. This is undermining Islam. So that cultural battle, unfortunately, ended uh, uh, within the first hours uh, of the new year uh, with this uh, terrible bloody attack. So, Mr. Redeme, uh, have um, various organisers of Christmas or New Year events been pressured or received threats not to hold events by Islamists? Yes. In fact, there, there were even billboards uh, and, and, and as we all know, Turkey is a country where freedom of speech and expression uh, is not necessarily guaranteed. But when um, various Islamist organizations and movements decided to target people celebrating Christmas or New Year's uh, through billboards, uh, through kind of public announcements, uh, the, the government has been extremely uh, tolerant uh, of such uh, discourse. So. Uh, in fact, many people this year chose to stay at home. They, they, they didn't feel secure enough to go out. Many of the street parties were cancelled. Uh, so this, this was quite a, a low-key year in terms of New Year's celebration, but that still did not prevent uh, this attack. So I think it's very important to disentangle the two, two, two different phenomena here. On the one hand, yes, this is a horrible Islamic State attack, and we, as we all know, the attacks all around the world, and it's quite difficult to contain those. But at the same time, Turkey has another battle, a, a battle for its soul, a battle for its orientation. On the one hand, a, more, a, a vision of a more pluralist, inclusive, multicultural Turkey where New Year's and Christmas celebrations uh, are commonplace. And on the other hand, kind of a more intolerant, a more authoritarian Turkey where... A kind of a straight jacket 
uh, of conservative Islamism is imposed on society to turn it into kind of a more homogenous, uh, monocultural, monofaith society. So today's attack uh, will also uh, initiate debates about the future orientation of Turkish society and politics. No, no group has yet claimed responsibility, to be clear, but what is it that you think the Turkish government should now be doing to try and answer all these different attacks? Yes, this is quite a challenge, and it's a challenge not only for the Turkish state, of course, but also for uh, many other European Union states suffering uh, similar attacks. So I, I, I would argue that the priority should be to refocus Turkey's security apparatus on real hard terrorist threats instead of going after kind of dissident academics, dissident journalists, dissident literary figures and NGOs. As we all know, uh, Turkey's security apparatus and law enforcement have lately been busy full time uh, with cracking down on democratic dissent in Turkey. Instead, Turkey that faces all these violent threats, and not only from the Islamic State, but uh, from a long list of terrorist organizations, should make it a priority to go after terrorist organizations. So that's, that's the first strategy. But Turkey needs a two-pronged strategy. At the same time, Ankara uh, should make sure to tackle this climate of uh, fear, climate of intolerance, climate of hate uh, that breeds uh, radicalism that allows jihadists to recruit militants easily. So unless Turkey works on inculcating a, a, a culture of pluralism, uh, inclusivity and, and tolerance, uh, it will be uh, easy for uh, radicals to recruit uh, new militants for their future attacks. That was Aykan Erdemir there, former Turkish Member of Parliament. We'll stay with us on BBC News. We've got more to come. Let's just have a look at the live shots now outside the Rainer nightclub that was uh, attacked round about one o'clock local time in the morning after people, of course, celebrating the new year. And uh, they'll have plenty more on this coming up in the latter half of this programme. Of course, there's plenty more for us uh, on the website too. And also to come...